All right, Brett, what the hell do you want bench press for anyway? Oh, that's right. in your program. Oh, it's in the pro. That's right. I forgot. But wait, why, yeah, why, I did why, why did you ask me that question? Well, uh, well, I guess because the bench press is extremely popular in gyms all over the country, and I think that it's uh, it's overrated as an exercise. It is. Let me back up first and say it is a completely necessary movement for a complete strength program. But I think that a guy, a guy's presses ought to be more important to him than his bench presses. And the reason I think that is because the press is a much more complete exercise, works the whole body. And uh, it's kind of been forgotten and I kind of like old stuff. And the press is a good total body exercise that also is, is an upper body exercise. It's limited by upper body strength. The bench press, on the other hand, having a much shorter kinetic chain is an exercise that can be used, uh, can, that can use a lot more weight than a press can. Most people pre uh, bench way in excess of their press. And that's true of, of even pressers 40 years ago that were real good at this. Uh, the clean press was taken out of the Olympic lifts in the 72 Olympics, and it's gone downhill since then. The bench press has, has come along, and it's the most popular upper body exercise in gyms all over the world right now. And I think part of the reason for that is you get to lay down when you're doing it, and that seems to have an appeal to, to people, yeah. which well, is, that's the, kind the, of annoying. Well, it's what the NFL uses for their... I know, and, and the NFL uses the, the 225 for reps as a proxy for upper body strength, and it, it makes pretty good sense. I mean, a man with a 500-pound bench can do more reps with 225 than a man with a 250-pound bench. Yeah. Duh. So for their purposes, it works just fine. Uh, for uh, purposes of getting strong, it works just fine, too, because you can do more weight on the bench press than you can on a press, but you have to press, too. Since you're pressing already, I'm not worried about you, but people watching this, I just don't want people to be so in love with the bench press that they forget to press overhead. Because of those two, my preference, if, like for instance, if you were put in a situation of having to only do one, I would rather you just pressed. Gotcha. But the bench press is extremely valuable because heavier weights can be handled and as a result, it makes you stronger in upper body. And it's very popular because of chest and all that other stuff. And uh, well, probably the downside is that you see so many people cheating it. Their spotter doing as much work with traps and arms as you're doing with the pressing muscles. And uh, I'd, I'd just like to, for everybody to keep the bench press in perspective. Okay. okay. The way we bench is, is actually technically very easy, okay. okay? So lay down on the bench. I'm gonna line Brett up on the bench so that his eyes are just on this side of the bar, just like that, okay? Now, Brett, you're gonna look up the ceiling. Okay. See the picture up there? I do. There's a grid on the ceiling. Most gyms have a ceiling. This method doesn't work outside. I don't recommend that you bench press outside anyway. It's just too, that's silly. So now we're gonna take a grip on the barbell. I've got you on just eyeballs, just on this side of the bench. And, and the reason for this spacing is because it puts you far enough down the bench that when you are doing the exercise, it doesn't catch on the bench itself but it keeps you close enough back up here so that this handoff distance is not very, is not an unmanageable mess for uh, the spotter and for you, okay? Now, the grip we're gonna use on the bench, let me explain this real quick, is gonna be the grip width that permits us to have the longest range of motion around the shoulder at the bottom of the movement, and that would be the grip width that produces a vertical forearm when the bar is touching the chest, all right? This is too close. This is too wide. Vertical forearm gives us the greatest range of motion. Now, we're not competitive power lifters. We're just using the bench press to get strong. So we're gonna take a grip 
that for most people on a standard barbell with a 16 and a half inch dimension right here would be about a hand width out from that. And if that doesn't work, then we'll adjust it. But that gets most people in the ballpark. And for a standard power marked bar like is found in many gyms, this is a B&R bar. It's got both the power lifting marking and the Olympic weightlifting marking. This inside mark is 32 inches. Your little finger will be close to that. And that usually produces the right type of bench press grip width that works for us for general strength and conditioning purposes, which is what we do. Okay, now, feet are planted flat on the ground. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do with those here in a minute. Now, I'm going to hand you the barbell. With locked elbows, you're going to carry it out here. And it's going to come into balance directly over the shoulder joint. Okay, now this balance relationship is fairly easy to understand. Here's the weight. The point of rotation is the glenohumeral joint and the shoulder. That's out of balance this is out of balance. The barbell will be directly above the point of rotation so that there's no moment arm between barbell and point of rotation in the shoulder. Elbows are locked out completely and now the bar is in balance. Okay. Now look at the ceiling. Brett, what you're going to see is a sight picture composed of the ceiling pattern and the bar. The ceiling should be in focus. The bar is in the field of vision. All right? Just stare at that. Okay? Now, I'm going to move this just a little bit. And you can tell, relative to the ceiling grid, that the bar is moved. You see the position the bar is in right now relative to the ceiling? That's the lockout position. Okay? Now, I'm going to come down here and touch you on the chest in a position that is three or four inches below the level of the glenohumeral joint on the shoulder. And I want you to put your chest up as high as you can get it in the air, high as you can get your chest, shoulders back, as far as you can get them back together in the back, like you're pinching my hand between your shoulder blades. Pull your shoulders down into the bench. Push your chest up out of the bench and arch the low back. Butt stays and you are staring at the ceiling, okay? Once again, I'm gonna to touch you right there. I want you to touch the barbell right there and return it to where it is right now. And you ought to be able to do that perfectly the first rep. And in fact, you did. Again, let's do a set of five with the empty bar. Three, make sure you're in that same position relative to the ceiling every time. You're going to look the bar back into that place at the end of every rep. And when the set is finished, I'm going to help you get it back in the rack. Always move the bar over the delicate structures of your throat and face with locked elbows. Okay, that's when taking it out and when racking it. And now we're in the rack and now Let's sit up. Let me explain why here, okay? Now, if we were taking a mechanical only view of the bar, uh, of the bar path and the bench press, a mechanical only view of the bench press bar path would be a vertical line just like it is in every other uh, barbell exercise. The problem with that is this. You feel that? This is shoulder impingement. When your humerus is at 90 degrees, of abduction and in internal rotation. The scapulas can't move here. And if I raise your shoulder up a little bit like that, you feel that? That is shoulder impingement. That is the trapping of the rotator cuff tendon between the head of the humerus and the AC joint. Physical therapists go on and on about shoulder impingement. In a press, it doesn't occur. It's physically impossible in a press, and we explained this last time. On a bench press, in fact, it can occur. 
And in order to avoid sawing a hole in your rotator cuff tendons with a vertical bar path, which would be mechanically better, but which we can't do because we don't want to tear your shoulders up on the bench rest. What we're going to do is this. We're going to move the bar as it touches your chest down a little bit so that your humerus is only in about 70 degrees of abduction. This unimpinges the shoulder. Notice the difference in the feeling right now? So instead of here, we're going to be here, which means that when you start off at lockout with the bar vertical to the glenohumeral joint, the bar will come down a little bit, producing a non-vertical bar path in order to keep the shoulder unimpinged. Okay? Now, that doesn't change the mechanics of the fact that a vertical bar path is much more efficient because from here to here, there is an unnecessary moment arm on the shoulder joint. Here's a way we can fix that. Shove your chest up as high as it'll go, higher than that. Touch my hand with your chest. This is the position that we're gonna bench press in. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna screw the shoulder joint back up under this point right here on the chest and return some verticality to the barbell path when we bench. So this is why it's real important for you to set up on the bench like this, because it restores some mechanical efficiency to this movement that we are having to compromise with by moving the barbell down to the start. Now, realistically, in, in most gym situations, I'm not gonna have to hand Brett 95 if he's gonna bench in the low 200s. But just to make sure that everybody understands that we are respectful of the bench press, I'm gonna hand him the bar in all of these sets today. Now, squeeze shoulders back into the bar, back into the bench, chest up higher than that. Squeeze into position. Big breath, good. That's exactly right. This, is the, this, this warm up period is the time during which you're gonna try to work your chest up into that big, big arch as best you can. The, the bigger the chest is, the taller the chest, the shorter the range of motion, and the more weight you can do. Okay. And the more mechanical efficiency that you have in terms of the distance between your shoulder joint and the bar. We're getting to the point where we should have enough weight on the bar to help hold you down onto the bench well enough so that you can start pushing this way with your legs. What I find is that people that have their feet way back up underneath them are preparing to raise their butt up off the bench. And people that have their feet too far out in front of them don't have an effective amount of push backwards. So what we're gonna do is use the quads, the knee extensor muscles. Everything down there will be just will be tight, just like in every barbell exercise, the whole body's tight. But we're gonna use the knee extension function to push you back into your arch. So I'm the bar, I'm holding you down. Now push back toward me. In other words, you're gonna use your knee extension to push your butt back toward your head and push the arch up. There we go. That's the position I want you in, okay? Thumbs are always around the barbell in the bench press, always. A thumbless grip on a bar is a real dumb thing to do, okay? Now, if you're benching 700 pounds in a competitive power meet and you want to take a chance on doing that, I'm not talking to you. But people starting out on the bench, hold the bar in your thumb. Hold the bar with your thumbs around the bar. This is dangerous enough as it is without taking the risk of the bar slipping out of your hands and hitting you because the thumb wasn't around it, okay? Good. Two. I'm seeing a little movement on the bench there. Make that stop. Four. There's a set of five. Good. Set the chest up. Push with your heels into the floor. Push your heels into the floor. Push your chest up in the air. 
if all you think about is pushing the barbell up, you're losing a measure of, press, of pressing efficiency. One of the best things you can think about when you're benching is that you're pushing on the bench with your upper back just as hard as you're pushing against the bar. It's as though you're pushing the two apart, okay? Dig the shoulders back into the bench and push the two apart, okay? This one doesn't move, but in your mind, you're, you're pushing the two objects apart from each other. Do the setup work right now. Chest up, push back with your heels. Great big giant breast. Now push the bench. Push the bench with your back. Good. And then we're back in the rack. Heels. Big breath. Good. It's a little bit too much bounce off of the sternum, Brett. That looks better. Good control now. Two more. Good. Good. Now I want to caution you about that last rip. Okay. okay. Don't head back toward the rack on the way up on the last rip. That's gotcha. another safety issue. Okay. okay. That thing has to lock out in balance because if you're tired at the end of a set of five and you've got the bar up here and you're on the way up with bent elbows right over your, right over your throat, bad things have occasionally been known to happen. Okay. They don't have to happen too often to make it to the newspapers, okay? Lock the barbell out over your shoulders before you start back to the rack, okay? okay? Always do that. This is a this is this is critical. A lot of guys have dropped bars in their mouth. Oh, that's a gruesome thing. It's really, really a bad deal. But it happens. Don't think it doesn't happen. It happens all the time. All of the accidents you hear about weight training that result in fatalities, all of them happen right here on okay. this exercise. Dangerous respect. It's, respect the bench. Use it, but respect it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, let's go. Big chest, big chest, big air. It's good. Good. Good control at the bottom. That's much better. Good. Last one. Lock it out. Straight over the chest. Now we come back in. That's it. That's it. 